I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. I have a pack and ship for you today. I'm going to show you how I pull them and pack them and get them ready to ship to my buyer. And of course, I'm going to show you what they sold for and tell you what I paid for the items. This LG Wright Button Daisy, that's the pattern, little glass basket, sold for $15 plus shipping. And it's going to Hawaii, so I have to pack it really well. Let's start with a sheet of tissue paper, wrapping it up and tucking the tissue paper inside the basket. I am a little concerned about the handle, it's pretty delicate. So I'm going to cut a small piece of swimming pool noodle. Yes, a swimming pool noodle. You've probably seen me use them before. I'm going to cut a small piece and use it to protect the handle. You'll need a cutting board and a utility knife. And do be careful. Cut's pretty easy. And then just separate it or break it off. And then cut a little wedge out of it. I do, I guess, about three quarters of a wedge. Just pulling that piece out. And let's see how it fits on the handle. Looks pretty good. I'm going to add a little more tissue paper. Just going to wrap it around the handle a little bit and then again apply the pool noodle. There you go. Looks like it's going to stay in place. Let's wrap this one more time in some tissue paper. This piece doesn't quite fit so I'm going to end up using two pieces of bubble wrap. I'm just rolling it up and taping it with some masking tape. That's my budget saver this year, using masking tape whenever possible. Let's use a seven by five by five box. This is not an eBay box, but it's a size that I like to have on hand. I use it a lot. And I put a little piece of tape on the side seam. I'm only going to show you one time here how I cross tape a box on the bottom a little piece of tape on the side seam and I'll do the same cross taping on top. Let's do a test fit. See what we've got. Let's add some more bubble wrap on the diagonal. Push it in gently and let's fill in the top. I think I'm going to try a half sheet of bubble wrap first. And adding my thank you note which I run 30 up on a sheet of labels. I think that's pretty good. Get it taped up and in the mail. I always write the first and last initials of my buyer and the state where they're located. This package is going out to ST in Hawaii. Now these are some very heavy bookends. These are Onyx bookends, polished, very, very heavy. I th they sold for $25 plus shipping. Let's go get them off the shelf. Where did I put these? I know I put them here somewhere. As I said, they're heavy. I wouldn't want to drop them on my foot. Get the other one off the shelf and figure out how we're going to pack these. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is wrap them in some tissue paper. Tissue paper only protects the finish and really makes a nice presentation for the buyer. That's all it does. It does not protect from breakage. So I've got two pieces and I'm going to go ahead and wrap each one individually in small bubble wrap. I'm really only doing that because I'm getting very low on large bubble wrap. And I'm going to give these a little extra protection too. So you'll see here I'll be using both small and large bubble wrap. Let's repeat the process for the other bookend. And then let's get out the large bubble wrap. This is recycled bubble wrap. Not my favorite. It's not as good as some of the bubble wrap that I get. I'm going to use two pieces with one piece in the center on the diagonal and just stacking both bookends. And I just start wrapping it up as you see here using my masking tape to tape it off and tucking in and taping each end. It looks pretty good. Let's take a measurement. I'm going to use an eBay box 10 by 8 by 6. See how that works out? Looks pretty good. Got a lot of extra room in here. And since I'm low in bubble wrap, I'm using some unprinted newspaper print. You can pick that up at your hardware store or Walmart. And I'm going to cross lay a couple of sheets of large bubble wrap going each direction. Let's see how it fits. 
adding my thank you label. Then I'm just going to tuck the bubble wrap around and kind of roll it down on the sides and see how much room I have left. See what else we need to add. And yes, we do need some more bubble wrap. And sometimes it takes a couple more sheets. I like to give the box a little shake, make sure nothing is shifting or moving. And this package is going out to SP in Colorado. If you watched my recent shopping haul, you saw this little vintage planter, this little nurse. Found it at the Goodwill in Bristol, Tennessee and paid $1.99. Let's go find it off the shelf. It hasn't been on here very long. She's a cutie. I have to protect her pretty well. Let's see what we'll do. By the way, she's made in Japan. This little vintage Japan planter sold for $19.75 plus priority shipping. Starting with a sheet of tissue paper, I want to fill the hollow area of the planter. As you know, I call that the void. I'm just trying to reduce any impact on it. And then I take another piece and just taking the corner and running my hands down through it, I kind of elongate the tissue paper. I'm going to wrap this around her head delicately, carefully, and then just add a little bit of regular tape to keep it in place. And I think I'll repeat that same process just above her feet, just giving her a little extra cushion. Now, this is a little bit of extra cushion when you roll it like this. It gives it a little bit of padding, but we still have to bubble wrap it, of course. And I'm going to use a couple of sheets of large bubble wrap and one on the diagonal in the center, as you see here. Let's place her in the center, wrap this around a little bit, folding up all the ends, all the sides, and of course using the masking tape to hold everything in place and taping both ends, tucking everything inside next to the little planter. Looks pretty good. Let's take a measurement. I'm going to use an eBay box and this one is an eight by eight by eight. And again, cross laying some large bubble wrap. See, I've got my thank you label on there. Let's tuck this inside gently, of course. It might look like I'm pushing it down hard, but I'm actually being quite gentle. And then I'm tucking the bubble wrap all around here and then finding out how much more I need. Well, I guess I need another sheet of bubble wrap and some more paper. I don't like to use the paper because it does add weight. And here's a little something. Do you see this little cross piece that I'm using here? I made this from cardboard. This is a little hack that I've come up with to, to use up the extra space in boxes. I'm pretty excited about it. And this is the first time that I'm showing it to you. But as I said, later in the video, I'll go into more detail. Let's give it a little shake. It looks good. Tape it up. And this package is going to, where is it going? BG in Pennsylvania. I sold this little vintage Kodak Brownie camera. Didn't get a whole lot for it. Sold this for $15 plus shipping. And I think I paid about $3 for it. Let's go find it in the garage. That's where it is. In one of these banker boxes on the shelf. Do you see the QR code? That's part of the duck pack and track system that I've talked about in other videos. And we need to take a look in this accessory box and find that camera. We've got a couple of cameras in here, but I know it's here. Just have to take a few things off the top. I think I spy it. There it is. Brownie Hawkeye. Let's go get this to the table and get it ready to pack and ship. Always adding my thank you label. And I'm keeping it in the bag to protect it from the elements and just wrapping it in some large bubble wrap, rolling it up and giving it some tape. And I'm going to use a 7x5x5 box. It's not an eBay box, but it's a nice size to have on hand for things like this. You'll probably see me use it quite frequently in my pack and ship videos. I'm going to use a half sheet of bubble wrap on the bottom. It was a little bit tight on the first test fit. Let's try again, add it to the box, push it down. Let's add the other half of bubble wrap on top. And you know, I think I need just a little more. How about one more half sheet of bubble wrap? Sometimes you don't know till you try. Let's get this folded up, give it a little shake. And this package is going out to DF in Wisconsin. This is a very unusual butter dish. It's part glass and part silver plated metal. It sold for $24.97 plus shipping. That was a nice sale. And I think I paid one or two dollars for it. Not much. So let's go find it. This banker's box is full of little items that are already boxed. If that makes any sense. You see everything in there is already in a box. And I think it's in here. And yes, it is. Let's take it in and get it to the table. So silver plated butter dish with a knife, by the way, has a little knife in it. It's pretty much pre-packed. Let's take a look at it, though. I think it looks pretty good. I do that sometimes. I pre-pack things a little. Let's put it back in the box. 
And because I don't want the box itself, the original box, to get damaged, I'm using these great value bread bags or bagel bags. And I'm going to slip this over the actual little box that I'm shipping. Whenever I have something that could get damaged from moisture, from water, from rain, sitting in a mud puddle, dropped in a mud puddle, heaven forbid, I like to put it in plastic. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just taping the plastic around. And then of course, we'll be sure to add some bubble wrap. Someone asked me recently the difference between small and large bubble wrap. I guess think of it as doing your gardening with no knee pads versus knee pads. I think it's much more protective. All right, back to this. I'm going to use an eight by six by four eBay box. This is an eBay box this time. It's another nice size to have on hand. Again, test fitting, but adding a sheet of large bubble wrap on the diagonal, just pushing it in and topping it off with some more bubble wrap, testing it here. You know, I don't like it when the top presses in, so I feel like I need to add something. I'm going to use a small tissue tube without any tissue on it, of course, putting it slightly on the diagonal under the bubble wrap and then folding up the flaps just because a little, a little filler, you might say. This package is going out to DH and New York. What's next? How about this vintage Valentine's Day candy box? I bought two of these at the Goodwill last year. They're in the garage in a clear tote with a purple handle. This sold for $22 plus shipping and I think I paid $2 for it. And here's the clear tote with purple handles. I love these totes. I got them at Big Lots. There's the QR code on the side. As you see, I have two boxes in here as I said but I want the one that is white. And these are just beautiful. Let's carry it in and I'm gonna show you a couple of things about it that makes it vintage. Do you see here where it says from Tony and he dated it February 14th, 1981. I love that, I think that's sweet, pun intended. I always try to think about presentation for my buyer. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tissue paper around this. I just think it looks so much better it looks like it's been cared for and as a seller that I care enough to protect it. So yes, I'm going to tuck this tissue paper around and then I'm going to add just another small piece on top. Let's get the box lid on, but let's take a look again. On the lid inside, it still says February 14th, 1981 from Tony. Too sweet. Okay, this is another cardboard box. I don't have a bag big enough to protect it. So I'm going to use some plastic wrap. I just got this at Aldi. It's not, I'm not sponsored for anything that I mentioned here, any products. And I'm just going to add the plastic wrap going both directions. You have to work with it a little bit to get it flattened out, to get it straight. It likes to wrinkle up a little bit. I want to add a second piece. So I'm just turning the box so I can go the opposite direction, tearing it off and just, you know, tucking it around, trying to make sure that the box is covered completely so that it's protected from the elements. Looks pretty good, got my thank you label on there. Let's take a measurement, see what size box we need. But I do need to add some more bubble wrap. I know it's not breakable, but I still want to protect it. Without bubble wrap, it could get dented from you know being inside the box, you never know. I have three sheets of bubble wrap here and then cross laying two sheets, just folding everything up as you see here and then just taping it off with some masking tape it's pretty easy to do. It doesn't really take that long and it makes a nice presentation for my buyer. I'm going to have to use a large mailing box. I know I don't need this much depth, but I do need the 12 by 12 dimensions. So I'm going to add some packing paper, place the little heart box inside, add some more packing paper. Again, I told you I've been very low on bubble wrap. It's been hard to get it in. It's still not here, it's been over a month. I've had to buy it locally twice now and cost me twice as much money too. This is where I'm going to show you how I make these cross pieces, my shipping hack, to fill up that empty space. I've got some scrap cardboard here. I'm just taking a measurement, as you see, on the diagonal from corner to corner. Once I know the height of what I need, the height of what I need to fill in in the box, I think it's about three inches on this one, then I cut a couple of three inch wide strips of cardboard. And my cutting board is from Walmart. If you haven't seen my prior videos on pack and ships, that's what I use, this large cutting board. I love this cutting board. And I'm not sponsored, by the way. Okay, we need to find the center. And we need to cut up to about halfway on each strip. I did that to both pieces. 
and there are slots now which we're going to slide one slot into the other like so but just push them together and you've got this cross piece this x you might say and look at it it fits in the box it fills in the space flaps are going down great this is a great way to fill in empty spaces in your box without using more peanuts or bubble wrap or paper I've been using this method quite frequently. You're going to see it in more videos. And this box is going out to KN in Illinois. I want to show you these completed matted cross stitch pieces. Do you remember when I bought these? I showed them in a prior video, I think a Christmas haul, where I found these at the Goodwill. And they were only $2.99 each, and I bought four of them. We did decide to ditch the frames. They were in horrible condition. They sold for $24.95 each, plus shipping to one buyer. I sold 1986 and 1988, and I did put each one of them in a clear bag that's resealable. You can see here the little flap on the back. First, I'm going to put them face to face, and then I'm going to put them in a plastic bag. This is one of those bread bags, those bagel bags that I get from Walmart. And then I'm just using an eBay envelope for starters, applying my thank you label. And it looks like this is going to be a pretty good fit, but this is not enough for me. I want to protect it more. So I'm going to also put these in, since they're priority anyway, I'm going to put them in a padded flat rate priority mail envelope. I want to go a step further. I don't want these to bend at all. So I'm going to add a piece of cardboard. Keep old boxes, cut them up. You can use them for all kinds of things like this. This is a stiffener, this cardboard is a stiffener to keep this from bending during shipping. And it doesn't add any more to the cost because this is a padded flat rate envelope. So this is going out to LN in Virginia. If you like these kind of videos, I appreciate a thumbs up. I invite you to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. And check out my channel, Avante Avenue. I have lots and lots of videos for you to see. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. I'll see you soon. Simple sales for good profit.